Hey y'all, if you hunt in a state where it's legal to feed or bait deer and other wildlife, and you use corn to feed, I wanna provide you with just a few quick tips to ensure that you are protecting the health of the deer, the turkeys, the other wildlife that's consuming that corn. There's some new research out from the Mississippi State University Deer Lab looking at aflatoxin. If you're not familiar, aflatoxin is a toxic chemical produced by a fungus or a mold that can form on corn at pretty much any point. It can form on corn in the field. It can contaminate the corn in the storage process. Aflatoxin can even be in your feeder and attached to the corn there. And of course, it can form on the ground. The fungus that produces aflatoxin is in the soil in most locations. And once corn comes in contact with the soil after a certain amount of time and in the right conditions, aflatoxin can form. So the Mississippi State University Deer Lab wanted to look at this. They wanted to measure aflatoxin and see what conditions produced this toxin in levels that could potentially be harmful to birds and wildlife like deer. Miranda Huang of the MSU Deer Lab and her co-authors ran this study. What they did was put out bait sites around the state of Mississippi and monitored them for 10 days. They did this in November and also in July. What they found was that in November, aflatoxin was not a problem. When it was cooler, when it was drier weather, they didn't detect aflatoxin in significant levels that would be a health problem for wildlife in November. But July was a completely different story. When it was warm, when it was humid, within five days, they detected aflatoxin at levels in these bait piles that would be harmful to turkeys, quail, and other birds. And by eight days, those levels had reached a thousand parts per billion in all of the bait sites. That's also over the level, which is 800 parts per billion, that's unhealthy for deer. Summarizing her results, Miranda offered three different tips for those who use corn to feed deer and other wildlife. The first one was buy your corn or from a source that tests the corn and shows the test results on the bag of corn. Now this may be required in some states and others it's not. And many sources of corn don't test. But if you can find a source that tests and includes the test results on the bag of corn showing that rates of af aflatoxin uh, were extremely low or were absent, that's a safe bet. That way your source of corn to start with is low or has no aflatoxin. Second, if you're gonna put corn on the ground, put it out in amounts that will be consumed by wildlife in less than three days. Don't put out so much that it's around for longer than three days, especially during the summer when it's humid and hot and those conditions that are conducive to growing mold on corn and producing this toxin. Third, Miranda recommended that you occasionally clean your feeder. The feeder can contain residue that has aflatoxin fungus in it. So every now and then wash it out. Miranda recommended a bleach solution of six parts water to one part bleach. Empty the feeder, rinse it out good with water, use that bleach solution to clean it, and then let it dry thoroughly before you refill it. Finally, let me point out the National Deer Association does not oppose feeding and baiting where legal and where there are no disease concerns in deer or other wildlife that could be exacerbated by feed and bait. But we also believe this should be part of a broader effort to improve nutrition and enhance habitat for wildlife. Feeding corn by itself is not adequate for improving nutrition. You should also take steps like planting food plots and improving natural forage and cover through forest management. Follow us here on YouTube to learn more about how to do that. We want to thank the MSU Deer Lab for this research that can help all of us protect wildlife health, and we support continued research on the effects of feeding and baiting on deer.